Good morning. Good morning. Bless God. Praise God. Uh, we have an opportunity to love on Him again today and to be used by Him today. So I hope your weekend was good. My weekend was great. Um, always interesting to see what's going to happen. I slept in really late on Saturday, so it kind of almost seems like a waste of the day, but you know, sometimes I guess you just need rest. So it is what it is. So, Doug Robbie to the meeting. Um, have something that just kind of rolled through me um, this morning, and uh, um, something I never used to really put a lot of stock in, but you know, um, we should. Um, so let me just let me just pray here a moment here. So, so Father, we just come to you in Jesus' mighty name, and Father, first of all, we thank you for. Again, the stability of your word. I thank you for the foundation of your word and how it gives us something to to build on. Father, we ask you that you would mix faith with your word today, that it would go forth and it would minister as it's supposed to, as your word would be sent forth and accomplish what it set out to do, and that it would not return void. I ask you to anoint me to share what you want me to share. Let my words be concise and to the point. Let it minister life where life needs to be ministered to. Bring freedom and set the captive free. Heal the sick. Draw men's hearts closer to you. Just use me as your vessel, Lord. I just thank you for it, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. So... Um, obviously everybody's got their eyes right now on, on what's going on over overseas, uh, as they should, as they should. It's a, it's a horrific situation, um, in the natural, uh, you know, uh, just, just terrible, just terrible. I've, I've heard it described the other day as it is Israel's 9-11, um, heard it on, I believe it was CBN. And of course, I mean, if unless you're there, kind of like if you were not in New York at the time, you may not totally understand everything or, you know, have a, uh, a full grasp of the gravity of what's going on, just even from a political nature, right? Um, um, I used to be heavily, heavily entrenched in po uh, politics and so forth, and uh, <laughs> I noticed when I stepped away from some of that, you know, living, breathing, and eating it. I noticed a lot of a lot of peace came into my life. So, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm not paid to do that. I pray for them, but that's not my job. So, but uh, you know, Israel, they are God's people, and I've I've heard of late, um, and, and once again, not necessarily my ministry, um, but um, I've heard of late people saying that this is a uh, a precursor. Uh, setting the stage for uh, there's a biblical war uh, called the War of Gog of Magog. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Gog of Magog, and um, again, I I don't have necessarily insight and revelation and 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 distinct understanding <clears throat> of the end times. I do know, um, you know, I'm a firm believer: rapture, second coming of Christ tribulation period, all that stuff. And the one thing I know of all of that is uh, keeping my heart ready and I want to go on the first load. Okay? Um, you you really don't want to be here when all of that goes down. So, uh, just putting that out there. But what I want to talk about today is our hope for right now. So I'll say it this way, I'll say it comically. If you can't handle your life right now, and some can't, some cannot, but if you cannot handle your life now, you will not be able to handle that time period. You just won't. It says in the end days, men's hearts will fail them. Okay. Um, but what does he give us? What does he give us? Well, you know, you, you, I, I've heard many times before, it's like, you know, you know, the testimony, I've never had anybody actually ask me this, but 
you know, what sets you apart, you know, as a, as a person of faith, as a person of faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that I have a home in glory, knowing that when I cast this earth suit off, and it will happen, why can I, how can I have peace now? And it's from even preceding the faith part, okay? It's hope. It's hope knowing that salvation is there. See, as Christians, we, 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 I heard this taught many, uh, many years ago, and, and, and it's true when you look at the path of salvation. We get saved. It's our moment of conversion, John 3.16, we're born again. We are being saved. Uh, Paul said we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, it's a process of relationship with, with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And we are going to be saved. There will be a day when we give up either our last breath here in the natural or that trumpet sounds and we go up. One of the two, we're saved. Okay, so there's, if you will, there's three, three parts to it, if you will. But what I want to talk about is the hope of the salvation. Okay, um, so it's, uh, as you saw in the caption, we're going to start with Matthew chapter 5, and um, we'll actually start with verse 43, I put 45, I always back up a little bit, this is all red letter, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you, and persecute you, as you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his Son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. I want to quickly dispel that, you know, that yes, there is a gospel out there preached, and it's, it is extremely wrong, because I believe it causes new believers and young believers to get wrong impressions and so forth, that you get saved, all is going to be fine. Well, yeah, a, a, a part of your life it is. You are fine. Your spirit man is now no longer destined for hell. You are destined for heaven. That is fine. If we consider all being not something in our 80 years here on earth, 80, 80 85 years. The problem is we still have to live out the rest of this time that we have on this planet. So this is talking about the rain falls. The Father makes the rain fall on the just and the unjust alike. So, just like the man next door who's not saved, he may be having a great time and you are not. Maybe you just lost your job. He didn't. He's flourishing. But yet he still has no peace, but you do. And it's not a competition thing. It's an understanding that I lean on Jesus in those hard times. Now we all have hard times. We all do. No, one, no one's immune to it. You're in this fallen world, so we are. Uh, no one is immune to it. If you go to John seventeen fifteen. I do have that one bookmarked, yay B. 1715, this is Jesus. Um, this is actually Jesus' intercessory prayer for his disciples. This is right before the arrest. Okay. Well, I'll start with verse 13, I think, I believe here. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may... that that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the word has and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them 
from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. He, we don't get a pass. Sorry. We don't get a pass. Now, I am a... I am definitely a person that describes that I believe in every move of God, every doctrine that has been preached, word of faith, the you know, the charismatic movement, Pentecostal movement, the Methodist Wesleyan movement, all of these movements were of God. Every move of God, unfortunately, gets off gets off eventually. Nothing is destined to be forever in that in that aspect. Because we are in the world. We're just not of the world. So when we're talking about word of faith, we're talking about speak to the mountain and see and be cast in the sea. Somewhere we, we somewhere, somehow, I believe it has been um, I want to be careful how I say this, it has been mis uh, described or mislabeled, if you will, that we speak to every mountain and we never have to have adversity. Well, I've heard somebody say it. It's on the Gaither video where uh, Splash Gentleman is talking about the song Amazing Grace and how it was actually crafted and so forth. And one of the quotes he puts on there, he said he had a little lady come up to him and he said, Son, if the mountain was smooth, you couldn't climb it. I can't dispute that. That's true. <laughs> Mountains, we can't get stronger unless we're using our faith. We can't get stronger. You know, it says, uh, James, it is, uh, tribulation, I, I, I'm not going to quote that because I don't want to, but it's, when you go to the gym, unless your muscles are challenged, they are never going to build. You can't just look at the weights and say lift, and all of a sudden you gain muscle. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You have to go out and do the work. You have to spend time in prayer, building up your faith, which comes from hope. Okay? So, understanding, say you just got saved yesterday, you're seeing this in a month, week, whatever. There are still going to be challenges in your life. Make there, let there be no confusion on that. The thing that has changed when you got born again is the fact that you now have a hope in glory, okay? You have a peace that when you take your last breath, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Until then, it may not be perfect. Now, God can do the supernatural things behind the scenes to make things better. Absolutely. Absolutely. But don't expect it to be perfect because it's just not gonna and it's a false expectation okay Hebrew 619 it speaks of this more directly and the writer of this book is is addressing this to the Jewish nation note it's called Hebrews it's Hebrew 619 this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Now let me tell you where this hope I'm talking about is developed. It is developed. So, when we got saved, when we had that moment, and if you're saved, everyone should have that moment that you can point to. If you're a child of God, you should you should remember when you got saved. If you can't point to that, we'll discuss that in a moment. But when we are born again, when we have that moment being passed from death into life, that is only done, Jesus said, that is only done when the Holy Spirit draws you. There was a there was a point of contact. When the manifest presence of God came into contact with your spirit saying, Hey, wake up, dead man. Come unto Jesus. He always points to Jesus. He always points to the cross. Tr 
trust in him, be buried with him, to where you can be right raised with him. Now, in that, that happens in the presence of God. If you will, Old Testament lingo, it happened at the ark. It happened in the Holy of Holies that is now inside of us because we are the temple of God. But it doesn't stop there. Our hope is developed, our faith is developed by revisiting that. You know, it says Exodus 33, 7. And Moses pitched his tent, and any time he went out to the tent, the present, the cloud would descend. The, every man would stand at his door watching as Moses went in to spend time with the Father, to spend time with God. And they would meet, and they would talk face to face. So this is a, it's, it's a developing relationship. It's not a, hey, yes, I got saved 25 years ago. I'm good. No, 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 you're not. It's, it's a, let me say it this way. If you are born again, that should not be enough for you. If you are married and you're in love, seeing your significant other once every 20 years, once a year, once a whatever, that should not be enough. It should be a, there should be a passionate love. There should be a passionate love for them. We should have a passionate love for Jesus and what he has done for us. To the point that if he's done for you what, what, what you say he's done for you, it should be, I've used this metaphor before. It's like you finding you know, there's thousands of car dealerships, thousands of car salesmen, but you found this one salesman who just did an amazing job. Even after you, did I really get taken or did I not? And you look up the price of the, of the vehicle and you know that, did he make a profit? Yeah. Was it a fair profit? Yeah. Did he really genuinely follow up with everything that he said he would follow up with? Did he spend the time with you, make sure you knew how to do this now on this new car that you've never done before? Yeah. Well, then you now, he gives you business cards. You're going to go out and find people, or at least anytime that conversation comes up, you're going to find a way to, hey, you need a car, go see him. He is, pro or she, or whatever. They, they did a great job, and they do it every single time that way. So when Jesus saves us, when he, when he impacts our heart, or impacts our life, and saves us from who we were, if you don't find yourself not talking about it, I hope I said that clear. What's wrong? Why are you not? Why? You know, this hope and this time in the Middle East right now, it just it says one thing. That time is getting short. And the amount of time for us to rob hell of people and get them into heaven by the Spirit of God, that time, that window is, is closing. And there's going to come a time that it's, you can't, it, there's just no more time left. So, if you, if you don't have a passion to share this hope that we have, that he's talked about in three different scriptures here, if you don't have a passion to see someone who is downtrodden in their life, who is who is struggling and you can't if you struggle sharing the hope that you have I'm, I'm just that's that's where we are right here we're going we're gonna pray about this so this is something that every believer should be able to do and it should be able to in some form of fa or fashion articulate it in a way maybe even better than I'm doing it now articulate the way that the that the person receiving it understands what you're saying it's it's effective it's effective okay we'll work on efficient later we'll work on effective right now so so if that's you i just want you to open your heart open your mind and so father right now we come to you in jesus mighty name and father i ask you that as you as your word says we're all called to do the work of an evangelist beautiful are the feet of those who cut carry the gospel so, Father, we, we have, as born-again Christians, 
we are to have this hope. We are to be able to identify this hope. We are to be able to share the love of Jesus and the hope of Jesus and the hope of glory that we have. Right now, we're in a trying time. And Father, we, as grim as it is, we rejoice as believers. We rejoice that you are in full 100% control of this. And for those that are just, they feel like their hearts are failing them. They feel like, oh Lord, I'm just, my stomach is a nuts. And I'm just worried. I'm in, I'm in panic mode. And, and, and you have those, you have those feelings of panic mode and anxiety. You don't have anybody over there that you know. You don't have stocks invested over there. You, you honestly, in the natural, you can't even understand why. You're in, a, you're in a, up in arms about it. Why you're in angst. Why you're in fear and anxiety. But you are. That is a lack of the hope. So if you want to have hope, if you want to know this hope that I'm talking about, this hope that's found in, in Jesus, just pray this prayer with me. Mean it with your heart. Believe it in your heart. Cast aside every, every other thought. And just focus on what we're talking about right now. And listen to that unction that you sense. It's like, I don't know really what he's talking about, but I want to know. So let's pray this prayer out loud with me. I don't care who you're around if you're in a room by yourself. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, according to what your Bible says, I confess I know I'm a sinner. Whether I know I do good things or not, it, it's, it doesn't matter. I know that I'm a sinner. I know according to your law, I've broken your law. And right now, I fall on your mercy. I open my heart to you. I ask you to come into my heart and wash me clean. Wash me of the sinful nature. I ask you to take out the stony heart that's in me, the hardness of heart that's in me. That even right now I'm struggling praying this prayer. But I ask you to remove that from me and replace it with a heart of flesh, one that's sensitive to you. I ask you now to come into my heart and make me a new creation. One that knows how to love on you. I hope that I have that I can be in heaven with you one day. I hope that I can have right now by the Spirit of God. I ask you to come into my life and I tear down everything in my life that's not of you. And Lord, right now you're revealing every, every one of those things to me. I cast them aside. I remove them from the, from the Lord throne in my heart. And I ask you, Jesus, to sit on that throne. I ask you to be my Savior. I ask you to be my Lord. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit according to what your Bible says. You say in your word that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, but no one comes to the Father except by me. I thank you, Lord, right now that you've come into my heart causing me to be born again of the Spirit. That I am one of your children as of right now. Before I was a creation of yours. Now I am a child of God. I am a child of the Most High. And I thank you and I receive the free gift of salvation that is in you. If you've prayed that, if you've heard this today, next week, next month, or next year, I would love to pray for you. If you want to drop a, a message on it, you can even go into the to the Facebook thing and send a, a private message to me. That's fine. I'd love to connect with you and pray with you. I'd love to get you a Bible if you need one to help you find a church. If you, you need a church, these last days are going to get really good, really dark. We don't know when we will be raptured out, which is a whole different thing. Um, but I don't believe it's far. But right now, right now, you've just been given a mansion in heaven. 
you have a home with the Father. If you've prayed that prayer and you've believed it in your heart, you are going, you will be saved. So, I thank you for your time today. Blessings. Um, I pray this minister to you. I pray the Holy Spirit does a fresh work in your life. Be a blessing to someone today. Share Jesus with someone. The door may be small, but if you see the door open, share what you can. Jesus loves you. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Jesus loves you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we'll see you tomorrow.